Bacula Enterprise Edition to the rescue. Today, we are going to demonstrate the process of configuration of a file set and a job definition and a backup and restore job execution from and to the Microsoft 365 environment. The easiest way for you to create a file set configuration from for a Microsoft 365 backup job is to utilize the Microsoft 365 file set creation wizard, which is part of the BWeb graphical user interface. The wizard is accessed from the left-hand navigation bar by clicking on the Microsoft 365 and by clicking on the file set. There are certain prerequisites that need to be met in order for this file set to be successfully utilized inside of a job execution. The most important one of them is that the plugin which is installed on the client host is authenticated with the Microsoft 365 Cloud. The process of authentication of the plugin to within the Microsoft 365 Cloud is detailed in one of the previous videos. The first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to enable auto commit functionality of BWeb. So all the changes created will be automatically committed and uh, the configuration will be reloaded. Next step is to select the proper client. In this case, this is the client on which the Microsoft 365 plugin is installed and click on add. For the first step, it is needed for you to select a proper tenant name. Tenants are listed from the ones that the plugin is authorized to run backups from and restores to. Next step is to select certain entities uh, whose data is going to be backed up. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are going to create a backup of all the content from all the Microsoft 365 services that belong to a certain user. Because of this, there is also a need for this user to delegate permissions for the plugin to be able to backup this content. This has also been done and uh, demonstrated in one of the previous videos. All you need to do here is to select a type user, more direct, and place a username and click on Add Selection, and click on Next. So, next step is allowing us to select the list of Microsoft 365 services from which we want to back up the content. Not all of the Microsoft 365 services are related to user entities. I'm going to select only the ones that are. The details about this can be found in the documentation describing the Microsoft 365 plugin functionality. So I'm selecting all the services that hold the data that is relevant to a selected user. I'm clicking on Next. Next few dialogues will allow us to tune or to select certain parameters for all of the services that we are planning to back up. For the purpose of this demonstration, I am going to leave everything as is, as default. Defaults, if, uh, which you are going to notice, is mainly selecting everything from all the services. So email, calendar, contact, drive, OneNote, chat, and tasks. And the last step is used to name the file set. I'm going to name it by the username without the domain part. And I'm going to select two options. One is one of our best practice options, and that is abort an error, which means that this plugin is going to abort the backup job if it encounters errors. And I'm going to select this option, which says, after saving file set, go to create job wizard. Why? Because when I click on the Save button, another wizard is going to start, and that wizard is going to navigate me to create the Microsoft 365 backup job. Again, I will enter the same name for the job, description, something that will help me to understand what this job actually backs up, and some possible job template. Of course, those job templates can be pre-configured for the purpose of this demonstration, this one will do. And the next couple of steps will help me to define all the other parameters of a job. Client, which will execute the job, that is the client on which the Microsoft 365 is, the plugin is installed. 
then the file set which needs to be utilized in the job, defining what is being backed up. This is already predefined because I've accessed this wizard through the file set configuration wizard. Click on next. And then where the data is going to be placed. Of course, you can select some different pool, different type of messaging, and different storage. For the purpose of this demonstration, the default ones will do. And once I click on next, the only thing I still need to select is when this job is going to be executed. I'm going to select one of predefined schedules. If, of course, if you have more, you can select any one of them. And by clicking on Next, I am actually finishing the configuration of a job. This job now has been configured, and it will be executed according to the schedule for the purpose of this demonstration, but also as a part of best practices. I'm going to start this job manually in order to make sure that everything is functioning as supposed to. In order to run a job in BWeb uh, graphical user interface, you just click on a Run Backup button, select a job definition by name, and click on Run Job. You will be taken to a screen which will show you the progress of the actual job and also list the job log messages. It is quite nice to change the order of the messages that are list order of the messages that are listed, so the newest messages are going to be listed on top. As you can see, this job terminated with a backup OK status, and it backed up all of the listed services. You can see them listed here: contact, you can see calendar, you can see tasks, etc. And as a last thing which I want to demonstrate today is a restore from this just finished job. To restore in BWeb graphical user interface, it is to initiate and restore, it is adequate to click on a restore button and you will be granted with a wizard in which you need to select the client which you want to use for the restore. The actual job, I have only one run on this client and that is the job which finished recently. And then, in this restore, I aim to restore only emails, not other content to backup. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate through the content and select only subfolder name emails and click on Accept Selection. And I want to restore it directly to the Microsoft 365 environment. So in the Where options, I'm going to just place a root directory or a slash. And also what I want to do is I want to make sure that restored content does not overwrite or be written to the cloud if it's already located there for in order to make sure that emails will not be created as duplicates. I will place in Microsoft 365 plugin options, I will place zero in the allow duplicate object field. And then I'm going to run Restore by clicking on the Run Restore button. Again, I'm going to change the order so the newest messages are placed on top. And once the Restore has been terminated, I will see that all the files have been successfully restored directly to the cloud environment. Thank you.